Hello there everyone and welcome back to Do You Know The Last Is Of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Ukraine Lover. But now we got to talk about unity and struggle in a time like this. It feels absurd to see Ukrainians squabble and fight with one another. To do such petty things is to fall into the hands of Germany. There can be no more division when it comes to the fight of a lifetime, the fight to preserve the freedom of Ukraine. It's a very rallying cry of the united struggle, the song that Vasil Stus and Taras Borovets sing from the rooftops. The United Struggle campaigns for the organization for a broad anti-fascist front. Just how broad this front will be has not yet been determined, however. This idea struggles to find appeal among the people who have just come out of a war and whose only concern is how to put food on the table. But for the United Struggle's faithful, there's no question that they are the party that must lead Ukraine if it is to continue being a free nation, of course. Vasilis Stus and Borovets will lead the nation. The only answer. They're surpassed, what? Uh, months ago seemed like an insurmountable odds, yep. Yeah. We can only do so join together as one against those who wish to oppress us. Now as we face an even greater colossus, that of the German Reich, soon to wake up from its slumber and ready to crush us with all of their might. The only solution to this dreadful problem is to unite a friend against Ger the Germans. Our one chance of surviving against the wave that seeks to oppress us and strangle our republic in the crib, but one important question remains, how do we accomplish such a feat after a bitter civil war? Huh? Eventually, through the power of the Cons Command. Because we only need a lot of yellow here. It's only so much political power, too. What do you want to not bad? Hmm. You know what? When? Let's do this one. Get more options here. And we'll see. Very then rise. Why not? Mothers weep for the sons and daughters. Patriots mourn the history and heritage turned to ashes. Uh, and Ukraine herself lingers in agony the scars of its land. We can only bury these losses, uh, but we can always rebuild. We must now have a golden opportunity to take back the future that was rightfully ours. Uh, no more shall we be oppressed by the forces of imperialism, the force of Krakow to the madmen and their totalitarian ideals. Our Ukraine shall rise from the ashes and it will be stronger than ever before, which will be a great, great thing for us, of course. Oh, and there goes Nederlanda. Oh, poor Nederlanda. Goodbye. Good, goodbye. Ah, uh, very good. Very, very good. Happy June, everybody. Happy, happy June. I want to get just a little bit more. I'm military matter, Mr. Stuss. We need you to make a decision. For the past few minutes, Mr. Stuss had been staring at a map of Europe. At least it was thought to be the map of Europe. This is no way of telling how accurate this map was in the mess that came after Hitler's death, and all that did was compound Stuss's indecision further. We share Galicia with Poland, do we not? He murmured. Getting back a few stiff nods in return, something could be made of this. Perhaps a deal or an enemy. Crap, we might just be surrounded on all sides. What if German occupied Russia? The regime is weak. The partisans are ready to strike, and we may find solace in the failures, no? Or we may simply be underestimating them. He buried his face in his hands with a fear present since Ukraine's victory at last beginning to overtake him. Belarus in the Baltics. They're nothing more than a bastion of the enemy, darn it. I can't fail Ukraine, I can't. Odessa and Transnistria, held by the Romanians. Nothing more than to be said of that. He exhaled heavily, with the beads of sweat dripping down his face. I'll attack us first in small numbers in a waterfall. I'll leave this great task to you, gentlemen. Thank you for your service. He rushed out of the room, holding back tears. Factions of the front. We may be, we may wish to end factionalization, but we must uh, conceive when, even within a party as united as our own, dissent and debate exists. In particular, two voices argue for the competing visions of the party. The Sistus and his ideas can argue for a broader front and able to encompass all Ukrainians willing to fight for their nation. They are primarily made up of younger voices within the party, activists and dreamers, who wish to put aside the differences of the past for a united nation above all else. They are opposed by Taras Bolba Borovets, alongside his choir of pragmatists assembled primarily from partisans. Borovets argues against overexpansion, believing in the need to centralize efforts towards a smaller core, allowing for more cohesive and powerful measures against their oppressors, and water with the tyrant's blood. A plant weather lies withered, frail and thirsty. Then the obvious course of action is water it. Our Ukraine is a plant thirsty with vengeance. Ukrainians gaze at the captured fascists, brown bureaucrats who just months ago would have sent their families to die if it meant a slightly higher year of crops for their masters in Germania. There will be no quarter given to any of them. Each one will face summary execution. As the thousands that managed to escape the crushing of their hulking abomination, the captured nation will soon find it in a mass grave. 
And no one will cry, but the even most craven bootlicker. After all, the only thing that can cure the thirst of a plant like you can is the blood of its tyrants. Another man dies. Bang, bang. Oda. Oda, I say. With the defendant's state's opening remarks. I demand a lawyer. This is a show trial. This is a farce. This is a bang, bang. Will the prosecution state their opening remarks? Thank you, Your Honor. Is it not clear that before us lies the worst of criminals, the good soldier fights for his duty to do so, but the fascist he spat on the ground as the crowd booed from the, at the word? The fascist bleeds while the nation is drawn in the service of not even his own people. But his twisted master is one who betrays duty and morality at once. We seek nothing less than the justice in, to, in its totality. Thank you, head prosecutor. Let us begin in the earnest of the trial of Mr. Weber versus the Republic of Ukraine. God, what cruelty is this? Fascist, we have evidence of attempts to burn documents detailing the occupiers' many crimes. Please let this heck end. Fascist, where were you present during the Bobby Yard massacre? Do they seek to degrade me further? To spit in the face of truth and call justice? Fascist, your crimes are many and your punishment is death. Take him away. No, you can't do this. You can't do this to me. Bang, bang. To thunderous applause. Nice. Um, we're majority there. We're close to the majority here, too, which is kind of cool, actually. Uh, let's go with that one. We'll have the majority there for now, but we'll see how long it lasts, you know. Of course, we just read this one, too. Uh, points of the program. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Cooperate with the communists? God, communists. Points of the program. Our party cannot exclaim meaningless speeches proclaiming a united Ukraine without a program to back it up. It's why we've had our top ideologues finish a perfect, effective plan for how we'll rebuild and govern Ukraine and restore to its former glory. I also cover basic human rights that have been neglected for far too long, including freedoms of speech, religion, association, and so much more. It'll also make sure that every Ukrainian man, woman, and child will have access to necessary services such as health care. To ensure we deliver on these promises, we'll also enact a plan to nationalize most resources so that they are used for our country's best interests and the freedom we have gained. If we were to have a one minute five conversation, wait, a one five minute conversation with the average voter, it would be fair to consider them absolutely clueless about the state of our nation. Ukrainians fail to appreciate just how much freedom they have won in these last few weeks, a crucial fact that we'll do well to remind them of. We'll take on this double task ourselves, broadcasting educational messages, reminding each voter of the freedom they think and they enjoy thanks to our efforts. Furthermore, we'll make sure they know what will happen to the glorious freedom should any fascist or tyrant attempt to seize control of the country. What else we got here? That's pretty good. Are you all insane? Probably. Why would any sensible Ukrainian vote for a party other than the United Struggle? Oh, Lublin's party believes that survival can only be attained by turning a free nation into what is a tantamount to the old Rex Commissaria in all but name, but while the cultures believe our songs and poems will be what wins the fight against the sweeping waves of German oppression. An election campaign will emphasize all the points of the voter, reminding them that we're the only realistic candidate for maintaining a free Ukraine, spreading the message. Our team wants a point of this. We spend years to fight just to wander around the countryside aimlessly. Maxime, can you shut up for a moment and just spread the word? He said, gesturing with his arms that he did so, United Struggle will win off old successes alone. Now that I understand, but is this thing on? The crowd cheered like the days of the first liberation, but under United Struggle. It'd be like a second one. Let it be known that it was under the communists that Ukraine first fell. Let it be known that the OUN seeks to mimic the Germans in their tyranny, and let it be known that the Germans, the ever swelling wave of cheers quickly turned to booze, decided to slaughter us, to hurt and kill us like cattle, to starve the breadbasket, our breadbasket, but they failed. The child's turned from waves to an ocean, drowning out even a Maxim. Thank you, my countrymen, and remember that it was through United Struggle and the Polician Guard that such a victory was possible. I'll give you this, Artyom. <laughs> you know how to handle a crowd. Helps when you're saving the nation by doing so. You've always had a flair for dramatics, so come, let us have a few more towns to visit today. The pen is mightier than the sword. Before a Europe strong and free, the Ukrainian phoenix rises. Slaves no more, never again. Slogans such as these and more lined every street corner, every dilapidated building, and every street sign. Mostly due to the fact that cars were rarities, these pamphlets, although normally to many free from German oppression, were foreign and much-needed sites for the Ukrainian people. They marked a, few, a new dawn for the tortured nation and future, uh, future, future freedom, a guarantee to all. Their breadbasket's food for the breadbasket. Ukraine's food supply long, nothing more than another resource in the great game of geopolitical bickering was finally to lie once more with his people. To speak is to breathe. The mouths of the people, long clamped shut, were finally free like doves in newly opened cages. Food, water, housing, these will all be fundamentals of a new republic. What was once privileges for the German overlords now found the way to the oppressed. And remember, all these things and more can be truly yours today if you only vote United Struggle. Reach out to Roman. Uh, there's that. Or cooperate with the communists. Which, honestly, why would we do that? I don't want to increase the popularity of the Spivator align. It doesn't make too much sense to me why we do this one, but... 
We're going to cooperate with the commies if we have to. Fine, fine, fine. The commies were, we fired on the apparatchiks of yesterday, blindly following Moscow's orders as they stamped out everything that makes Ukraine special. No, there are also patriots like themselves, men who wish to see Ukraine free from Nazism, even if their vision of a free Ukraine was markedly different from ours. To live up to our deals of United Struggle, we'll offer amnesty to even every communist partisan who lays down their weapons and agrees to fight for the government instead. If these communists are as dedicated to the fight as they are against fascism, as they say they are, then every single one of them will make an ideal soldier in the battle against Germany. But we will see. No guarantee. Absolutely overwhelming. Are you insane? Of course I am. Absolutely insane. I'm nuts. But dead men cannot write. A nameless soldier trudged through the mud of a nameless town. And everywhere he looked, he saw what he dreamed of for years. Hope, and then he tore it down. The speaking of debris was removed in favor of the direction of the local recruitment office. The breadbasket's food for the breadbasket was replaced with a paragraph-long propaganda poster without soul or life. That's how Ukraine will survive, he explained to himself. Sacrifices must be made for the greater good, he reaped, repeat, he repeated in his head until it hurt. Once or twice he said it out loud just to reassure himself further, it never worked though. Cultural idealism will bring about the nation's fall to invasion once more. He tried to suppress the fact that he held sympathies to the cause. Spiv of authority, scum will reestablish German occupation without a fight. He did his best to blot out the image of his Spiv authority cousin from his mind. Join the police guard today, that made him feel better. Keep the Nazi horde out for good. There was a sweet catharsis. All it took was for him to think about what laid outside the nation's borders and not what laid within. Fighting fascists and followers. It's not enough to vocally condemn the fascists and the Rada and other parlors of politics. We need to take them to the streets. We'll physically oppose them at each turn, even if that fascist takes on the guise of Ukrainian. We'll do, all, do our all to prevent the movement for defense against Bolshevism from organizing against us, be it demonstrations and marches of anti-fascist fervor or counterattacks towards them whatever they try to disrupt our fair and democratic processes. But we have fought fascism before. And we'll continue to take any action in, in it, whatever take, any form it may take. Serhi stared at the moldy crust of bread in his hands, turning it over and again and again as he mulled over the possibilities in his mind. Chernobyl was only a few hours away to the northeast, sure, they'd be at a constant risk of discovery and might end up getting shot, but maybe that's a decent meal they could get before they did so, looking around. Serhi could tell that many of his fellow partisans were thinking the same thing. When the last message had come out of the Shumitsky's collapsing government, imploring them to fight on in the forest and the field, Serhi and his men had responded with enthusiasm. The UA SSR might be gone, but they'd given those bandits a good run around nonetheless. Months of privations had caused enthusiasm to wither. The forces around Chernihiv were extensive, but riddled with unfriendly villagers, many of whom were armed and very capable of defending themselves. Even if they could manage, they found a treasure of food somewhere. Ammunition would not be so easily obtained. They were down to rationing bullets now. Not that the bullets even made it out of their guns half the time. They were in such bad condition. Oof. Even if they uh, suddenly said he uh, heard the unstickable whirling of an approaching helicopter, along with was that a megaphone? He caught glimpses of it through the treetops, and it passed overhead. The voice became audible. Lay down your arms. Amnesty will be provided to those who serve against the Germans. As the helicopter continued on its way, the partisans looked at each other. I can do it three, three square meals a day, the one volunteered. Everyone thought it was pretty good reasoning. Food is a powerful incentive, and we bow to no one. Or none. The people's voice is clear. You know how to struggle will win the upcoming elections by wide margin. Our people are ready. They are prepared to defend our republic with their lives. Ukraine's scar will be healed, and our sons and daughters stand armed, ready to make sure no one dares harm their mother again. But like, the United Coalition is beginning to feel increasingly divided. And a battle against fascism and the values of our republic soon begin to favor one part of the fight of, over the other. It's a matter that has become the elephant in the room. A matter that will need to be addressed after our election. Or if not, we'll be nothing but carrion for Germany once they return. Oh, bury me, then rise up. Yup. And break your heavy chains and water with the tyrant's blood the freedom you have gained. Unhappy surprises. They were drawn to him, Molobin reflected, as he watched the column of protesters approach. They, he couldn't stay in public for more than five minutes but without some gang of thugs running after him. Fortunately, he had some help of his own. Flanking the speaking platform and protecting the Spivator rally were hordes of Olobin's own higher muscle. Some out and out fascists, but mostly perfectly respectable people. Knowing that the counter protesters were not about to engage in a street battle with his men, Oloblin simply raised his voice over them and continued as if nothing were amiss. He soon realized that something was wrong, though. When the column advanced forward, paying no heed to Oloblin's men massing around them, in fact, they were just jeering louder, waving their placards with swastikas overlaying Oloblin's face and spitting in his general direction. Oloblin frowned slightly but continued speaking. As soon as the first of uh, Oloblin's moved forward and intercepted the column, the front line of counter protesters immediately fell back. Behind him were, uh, 
Men of lines of men dressed in gray, some not having even bothered to remove their policing guard patches, all were armed with truncheons, and Olobun even spotted a few pistols tucked away in waistbands. This was new. The United Struggle had never been this brazen before. As murmurs spread throughout the Spiv of Thor rally, Olobun made a hasty exit from the Rostrum. With the roars and jeers, the two militias engaged. There's no room for traitors in our Ukraine. Oh, there goes Austin. They're still trying to kill each other here. Very nice. Good luck. See that the economy's dying. Oof. Who's victory? Vasil stood a scooter risk grinning like a lunatic as he leafed through the latest polling. The United Struggle's lead was now unassailable, and support had to still stop rising. While the United Struggle ran away with a vote, Zubia and Olublin were battling it out for second place. Neither, though, were likely to get more than a quarter of the vote. The Senate needed a celebratory drink or three. Stuss left his office and headed down in the lobby of the United Struggle electoral headquarters. A relatively unimpressive office block that had once housed some RK agents here or another. The place had been brought to life over the past few months. The lobby was always full of people and there were banners and burning, bunting everywhere. As he looked through, though, the grin curling up and died on his face. Yes, the lobby was full, but not with volunteers or party workers. The place was swarming with plainclothes men from the policing and guard. Borov, its men. He assured Stuss that the security is necessary and this was being one of the most important events in Ukrainian history, but then the sight made Stuss very uneasy. He knew there were many in the Guard who would prefer to disperse, uh, dispense with the democracy. Borovitz had restrained them for now, but how far would the Guard tolerate him? If parliamentary democracy proved to be too slow for the Guard's liking, would well, they stand by, or was Borovitz waiting in the wings now, even, just only needing Stuss to slip up once and a lion's shaky at its heart? Ooh. Goodbye, Vyatka. Goodbye, Oslin. You just killed Oslin. Stalker does win again. This is interesting. Is this... Is this new here? The military junta? Ah, if you don't know about this, please go ahead. Vasil Stus. Yeah, let's read about Vasil. Which I'm probably saying wrong. I'm always saying names wrong, so... The world had changed. Stuss suddenly listened to the cheering as he tried to contain himself before walking on stage. The roar of cheers seemed as if it could drown out the sun itself. Unabated since the election results were announced, each voice was a person who voted a united struggle, another defiant rejection of fascism, another triumphant scream of joy for the freedom. He could not resist much longer as he took to the stage with Borovitz, smiling alongside him. The voices grew louder and louder as the crowd seemed to swallow them whole. Stuss grasped the microphone as he attempted to speak the beliefs that people elected him for. In less than a year, we've accomplished what four decades could not. The cheers only continued to deafening levels as he kept speaking, but we can accomplish so much more as we stand as a bastion of freedom from within Europe against the tide of fascism. Ukrainian families eagerly held on to each syllable of Stussa's speech as a promise that tomorrow would bring no more pain, no more suffering. We must march together as one. And no more will we fight one another under the guise of German masters. We stand united against them all, so I say forward, come together as one for a free Ukraine. The crowd reaches Zenith. As clapping finally swallowed Stussa's voice whole, leaving him to think on his words. Words and promises, that was all they really were. How was he going to fulfill these promises? He uh, painted them a dream, one far different from reality. Stussa soon finished his speech and talked to the dreamers afterwards. He could only stare at his nose for the speech and clutch them tightly to his chest. Maybe people's will must be done. And if you read about the road of pain, please go ahead too. Happy October, everybody. And what's next? Civic action. In the dead of night, he left Kiev to sleep happy for the first time in a long time, but was this in spite or because of the men and women who patrolled its corners at night? Women like Oksana would fought for freedom and survived to create a new Ukraine unlike her husband who had faltered in the second half. They were the force beyond Stussa's words, the one that reminded the dogs who once knelt to the right that their life was measured by an hourglass. Glass shards danced around the kitchen floor as patriots forced their way into the home of a one-time Ukrainian National Council stooge. Oksana filled a kettle of water and left it boiling. A security measure should be should the worm try to reveal himself. The house itself was coated in opulence, one that made it clear which party supported. Chairs and tables were brutalized into a pile as photographs and metals were torched. Painted tridents would dowel the walls, while shattered glasses stained the floorboards. Rising smoke plumes signaled the need for a hasty exit as the proud band moved onto another collaborator's home. The hidden man and his family ran downstairs to extinguish a fire in vain attempts to save the ashes of what was left to them. When the UNRA told them that defection would make his life easier, he believed them. He was naive then. Look at all that we got for Stuss. So much. The Press of Freedom. The clock in President Vasil Stuss's office ticked away far quicker than he would have cared for. Each hour preoccupied was another hour of the fascists would grow in strength. 
He knew too well the consequences of that, the return of the German strain to their soil, brought on by his own people, ready to tear down every brick of the democracy the UNRA had built. Borovus knew these dangers as well, given this appointment to discuss it with Stuss the most important. Unfortunately, their views appear to be on the either side of a slowly widening ravine. Why are we allowing these traitors a voice? Stuss's teeth were grinding themselves away to nubs as he listened to Borovus speak. I condone the acts of those patriots against the sniveling cowards who try to hide from justice, waving around pamphlets that look like Lebrun could have written them. They torch the homes of our allies. How are we meant to present a united front when this is how our patriots act? Borovitz fought through the thick of it with him. Swiss thought he would see things this way. All we need is popular support to keep our democracy alive. What you propose and praise is what kills it. By now, Stuss and Borovitz were mere, mere inches away from each other. He saw all the blame of the elections. Borovitz restrained himself from the edge. So be it. If you want to let this fifth column sabotage your independence, then have your charade. I'll do what it takes to rid our nation of fascism. Its plan was only accentuated by a door slam as Stuss was left alone. This democracy they fought for was just really... Just prevented from suicide with all of them, and now he had Borovitz watching over it, ready to pull the plug in the name of freedom. Peace is a such a fragile thing, and cooperation is even more so. The UNRA has driven the Germans out of their homeland and brought the banded rights and communists to heal, but the divides of ideology are proving too great for them to overcome. Perhaps it was too much to hope that an alliance between social democrats, liberals, and collaborators could last for so long. However, their disagreements and differences evolve. They must all remain wary, for time waits for no man, and great calamity is coming. The threat of the Nazi war machine is growing louder, and its return to Ukraine is a matter of time, if not, if not, 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 not if. One way or another, an accord must be reached among Ukraine's leaders, and perhaps even between the newly free nation and the Reich. Dreaded and loathed as it may be, if an accord is not reached between Ukraine and Germany by word, it will be done by the bayonet. May God be with Ukraine as you approaches our darkest hour, for no one else will. Cool, but I think that will fully end our run playing as the as the Republic of Ukraine. It's been a lot of fun. I'm um, interested in seeing what else the TNO devs have in store for the future, as we've done all the paths through at the time of this recording. The United Kingdom, or, you know, uh, as well as this, at this point now, the Republic of Ukraine. But if you enjoyed the campaign, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.